2021 is shaping as a giant leap forward for technology as the pandemic continues to accelerate innovation. So what sort of gadgets will we see in the new year? Image Matrix tech editor Juro Sen has a few ideas and he joins us now twice in a weekend. Love it, Juro. What's coming up in 2021? All right, Janie, let's go to the crystal ball and see what will happen in 2021. And I think one of the big things is uh, augmented reality um, or uh, VR have been a big thing last few years, but VR could make a comeback and it already started in 2020. But in 2021, I really do believe that uh, virtual reality will finally deliver after decades of promising. And I've had a chance to test it out as well. And this is remote meeting stuff. So we talked about all the Zoom meetings, all that sort of stuff during the year. But we're seeing companies now, and this is not going to happen for everyone, that are using headsets, using browsers to enable people to meet inside a virtual space. Now, with things like 5G and better connectivity, this is possible. Also, better headsets will make it easier as well. I had a chance to do it with uh, Tim earlier in uh, this year, and uh, we had a bit of fun in the virtual space, had a few wines. But uh, essentially, I think that virtual reality will come into its own with meetings because not everyone can just sit behind a desk and not be active, but you'll be able to sort of pick things up virtually, play with things. It really is going to uh, become the next level of virtual reality for the business place in 2021. So look out for that. <laughs> I'm just uh, sorry, I'm not laughing, but I kind of am about you and Tim <laughs> there having a bit of a cheer and a high five. <laughs> I bet you had a lot of fun doing that. <laughs> 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 all over the place, Come all over the place. Uh, make some new uh, emojis, <laughs> the Tim and Jiro emojis. Uh, what about the uh, the wearable, there you are again, wearable technology. I mean, what improvements uh, can we uh, see? <laughs> You're not quite getting it right there, are you? <laughs> <laughs> I know, I know. We're used to it. <laughs> virtual space. Tim's not too good. At least he can't cop an injury in virtual reality. That's one benefit from it. But uh, you talk about wearables, Janie, and they haven't proved out of sight. I mean, the Apple Watch Series 6 is by far the best wearable I think you can get. It's absolutely sensational. But we're going to move into glasses in 2021. And now the big rumour is that Apple are very close to launching their uh, glasses. And when they do, the whole marketplace will open up. But it's not just glasses. I mean, Vuzix is a great company. It's been doing it for a few years that enables you to contact people through your daily activities, just through your glasses. But there's the sensors and the rings we talked about last week. Also, uh, other sensors that will eventually be able to be attached to any part of your body, connected to your phone. And it doesn't matter what health issues you have, you'll have a sensor that'll take care of it. And this could go straight to your phone for privacy or you can send it off to a doctor. So I think that this will improve over time because it has been hard for people to go during the pandemic to see doctors and, and other medical facilities like that because of the disease. So the more you can do on location at home with a device, the better it's going to be moving forward. So look out for more developments in the wearable space, particularly when it comes to medical and fitness issues in 2021. And what about the surveillance technologies? And also, we just saw a package before we came on to you, Juro, about the the romance fraud and the scams happening there with the uh, online dating services. They've got the zero tolerance and they have uh, certainly um, capabilities to detect and remove certain profiles. Uh, what are we going to see with that moving forward and also the surveillance technologies? Well, even before we go to the surveillance, can I just mention that story? I was watching it before we came on for this segment. And, Janie, I wanted to make a point, so I'm glad you raised it, is that when we go online, we have to treat people differently to we, than in person. We have to be a little bit ruder. We have to make sure that unless we see someone in person, which I saw in the story, and then someone asks for money, you know they're red flags. So, unfortunately, online, you just have to have a little bit of an edge about your day-to-day -day dealing with people because there are so many people out to get you. So that's one thing. Please be wary online, no matter what it is, whether it's finance uh, or banking or something like uh, romance. When it comes to surveillance security, this has always been a sensitive issue because uh, obviously people want their privacy. But uh, I was talking to Motorola Solutions during the year about their, and I did a story on it, about their COVID tracking technology. So workplaces, uh, other businesses around the country have already started looking at camera and software technology 
which uses you know already existing systems uh, through very smart software to work out if people are uh, you know going too close at the workplace. So that's going to improve even more. The good thing about it is, Janie, that most people will not even see, or a person will not even see the video. The computer will make the decision first and then flag it. So I don't think people have to worry too much about having their you know, privacy invaded. I mean, cameras are in the workplace in, my, in many places anyway, but that will be a bigger thing in 2021. Yeah, there's cameras everywhere. What about smartphones? Are we gonna see anything new there? We're going to see, and I, you know, it was my uh, number one phone of the year, the uh, Galaxy Z Flip, uh, Z Fo uh, Fold 2, with all these different names. But uh, I think you're going to see more foldables in 2021. And I've seen a lot of uh, experimental stuff. We saw Oppo come out with their sliding OLED phone. And uh, that technology works by LG in their TV setup. You can roll the TV up. I think uh, we spoke of that, about that earlier in the year as well, Janie. So you're going to see more foldable devices. And this opens up so many more opportunities for people who do work. So you've got a small uh, phone that has a very small footprint that you put in your pocket, but then becomes a larger phone. That is going to continue to improve in 2021. Obviously, uh, companies like Huawei and Samsung uh, in particular have an advantage, but other companies will start to join uh, in this, uh, I guess, uh, rush to get foldable phones. And the big question again is, will Apple do it? There's word that they're working on it. So how big good would that be an iPhone that's a foldable? All right, so we have to uh, wait, perhaps not go for the, uh, I don't know, the iPhone 12 or what the latest one is. We'll wait for the foldable. What about 5G? What's the changes there? <laughs> Well, if you've been holding out on 5G, maybe 2021 is the year to do it because that's when the uh, millimetre wave spectrum goes up for auction around April in 2021. And the millimetre wave auction means that's the 26 gigahertz uh, band. That is high frequency. And that's where the really unbelievable speeds come into play. And, and that means it also help with other devices, IoT devices, autonomous cars, all that sort of stuff, and just start to benefit from that. But millimetre wave, you can get it in the States, uh, in places, but here it's not available yet outside of some testing areas. But it is going to be the big deal. And I think 5G generally improved. And also 5G, like the home broadband, will be a bigger challenger to the NBN in 2021. So keep looking at, say, the Optus site when you, you're looking in your address and you need that 5G connection just see if you can get that home broadband because I had it and it was fantastic, don't have it anymore, but uh, it's going to be uh, 5G much, work, much better an option in 2021 than in 2020, that's for sure. So if you're looking at a 5G handset, have a look at it because they'll be cheaper in 2021 as well. And finally, Giro, the Boxing Day sales were on yesterday. They will continue for a number of days. Many people, you know, really uh, buying online more than ever, not only because of the sales, but of course the pandemic. You've always given us some great advice. Do you want to just remind us what we need to look out for when we're shopping online? Absolutely. So what you might receive is a lot of uh, emails, marketing emails saying, click here for a special deal. Now, even though that might be legitimate, do not trust it. Uh, go to the site, so if it's, say, from a vendor that's a, a big electronics vendor, okay, note the deal, but go directly to the website, type it in yourself, and that way you can ensure that you're not going to a website that's fake, that's trying to get your details by capturing you logging in. And that's the big thing. Once they have your login details, it all starts from there. And, and once again, Janie, and I say it all the time, just don't reuse passwords for things like your online shopping. Even if you think it's low level like Twitter or whatever else, if you keep using it, they, the crooks can get you at one end and very soon they've got all your details, including your banking details. So it's very important that you just don't click on email campaigns, just go directly to the website. That is the number one thing you can do to keep yourself safe when you shop online. And when you do, you don't have to line up. It's fantastic. <laughs>